Hey guys, this is Billy from AdultCello.com. We're here for part three of my Better Bow Hold kind of mini lesson series. We're gonna talk about Cole, okay? How I learned it, um, I had been playing for about two and a half years. I kind of hit a wall. I, I begged people for phone numbers. I got in touch with Ron Leonard, who's a master level teacher. Somehow I convinced him, despite being 28 years old and playing like a eight year old, he, he took me on and the, this was one of the first things he taught me to help me develop a bow grip that wasn't, you know, carved out of stone, basically. So I want to share that with you today. Um, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my videos. And if this helps you, please consider liking it as well. All right, let's get started. So what is Kolei? Kolei is basically a motion you learn where essentially the fingers alone move the bow. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate what it looks like. You've probably seen it before. Okay, so it's kind of, when it's practiced the way I learned it, um, is it's not practiced like a slow, like drawing sound or anything. You're just popping the hand back and forth and locking it into like, here's locked and loaded for down bow. Here's locked and loaded for up bow. Okay, and notice my arm is not moving. My wrist possibly, it looks like it's bending a little bit, but it's not coming up. It's not anything like this. So there's very little motion. I'm just trying to scoot the fingers back and forth, okay? Without the bow, it probably looks like a squid, something like that. Okay, so how do we, how do we get to this place? Um, I talked about this exercise in the first lesson we did. I've mentioned it a number of times. It really helped me. This is this kind of bow flexibility exercise. If we take this exercise that I've introduced you to, and we sort of turn it <laughs> on, so that it's vertical, we're, we're, we're now starting to get towards a cole kind of feeling. Okay, so here's what I would do. Go ahead, put your elbow on your leg, okay? And you're gonna have the bow, the, the idea here is that the tip of the bow is gonna be vertical at all times, okay? So the stick is vertical, okay? And when I'm relaxed, my thumb is not straightened out locked, but it's basically straight. My pinky's on top of the stick for this exercise, and then when I pull up, you'll see the thumb bends, okay? And the pinky bends, everything kind of scoots up, and the, the first finger, it's, it's kind of pointing down this way, and then it kind of, now it's, I guess, pointing to you, okay? But, so it's, the hand is shifting. The biggest thing here is that the thumb has to move with the fingers, it has to bend. If the thumb doesn't bend, you can do something like this, like casting a fishing rod. You can do the, like a windshield wiper kind of thing, but it, you can't scoot it just vertically. Okay, so that's the thing. If, there's, if you're trying this with me right now and you're feeling very locked up and very, I don't know, I see what he's doing, I don't know how he's doing it, and this does not work for my hand, it's probably your thumb if I had to guess, okay? It's your thumb just being straight and then you're, it, you know, if the thumb straightens out, there, there's nowhere to go. So the thumb has to bend, okay? And you're trying not to twist the stick as you bring it up. It's kind of humbling how hard this is. I've been doing this for so long and it's just still, it's like, is that really vertical? Um, so anyway, that's the start, okay? That's how you build the kind of feeling. Now, if we go onto the bow, what I'm doing here is I've got it, my hand is low, okay, my thumb is bent, I'm at a down bow position, like I'm ready to pull a down bow. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my pinky on the top of the stick. You don't have to, the issue, if you don't for this exercise, put the pinky on top of the stick, it, it might start swishing around as you do this kind of thing, and then that can kind of convince the rest of your fingers, and then pretty soon your fingers are just kind of like swishing and it, it's, it's, you're working on this to develop finger control and dexterity and, and now they're, they're not controlled. They're just kind of like dancing. Um, so keep the pinky on top if you can. Everything's collapsed and then, okay, I pop it into motion and if I had to take like a slow motion video, my guess is that I'm probably like 
sunk in nice and heavy, like a forte kind of feeling, like I'm, a, I'm about to start a big sound. And then once I engage the string, I, I, I don't lift it off the string on purpose, but I take like 80% of that energy and take it away. So then it becomes like, like kind of that light. Okay, so, so it just kind of skids along quickly. And it's gonna land, most importantly, I want it to land in, a, in an up bow position so that I'm then locked and loaded and ready to go. I can either pop it collet back this way or that's kind of the, the end goal is to be set for up bow, okay? So it's a good way to practice getting full finger flexibility, but also, you know, landing ready for the next thing okay so let's do let's do that let's try to do that like 10 times back and forth um one thing i learned quickly was that it's not about speed with this so we're not going to just like it's it's you don't need to become like a machine gun with this it's just settle in okay thumbs bent there's one now keep in mind as with when it, the, my elbow was on my knee, right now my thumb is not bent, really. Nope, not bent. It's straight because everything is in that kind of squid position. Okay, so allow your thumb, hat, like you're pushing the fingers out this way, the thumb will straighten out, that's fine. I think that's kind of a misconception that you always need a bent thumb. You just need it to be able to bend at all times. But it's some, there's plenty of times when I'm playing when my thumb straightens out. And I've asked other <laughs> master players, like teachers, they say the same thing. So, all right, here we go. Here we are. So now thumb straight, and I'm gonna pop it. I'm nice and sticky, almost like that world's smallest note from last week, okay? Nice and sticky, <laughs> boom. Popped it back into down bow position. So thumb is now bent again, everything's ready. <laughs> to pull a bow if I needed to, okay? Let's do it 10 times, sorry. <laughs> Got a little carried away describing it more. Here we go, 10 times. Ready, and there's one. Now load up, there's two, load up. Make sure your arm's not doing crazy stuff, okay? There's five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's Kole. You just gotta give it a shot. Um, I one thing you can do that I think really does help is video yourself, and then watch someone else demonstrating it, and you can try to compare and contrast to see. Like, oh, I don't think I'm moving my arm, but oh, look it. I'm actually compared to him or her, I'm moving it quite a bit, okay? One thing I'll say, depending on the cello you have, um, if the lower you go to the bridge, you're gonna, you can do this exercise. It sounds very metallic. It, it's very unpleasant. So I would tease it up just so that you get a little bit more tone. And the... Now, let's talk about what could go wrong. So much can go wrong. Let's talk about some of the main things that go wrong. Um, the, the bow is not gonna be traveling up and down ideally on this, so you're not, if you start here and you end up here, or if the tip is in one area and then you pull and it's now, you know, totally skewed, that, that's, you can see even from the arm that would tell you also but so you want to almost like you're pulling a straight bow if anything the button of the frog it's it's almost like it's starting to go downwards okay so as you here the buttons pointed up and now it's almost it's a little bit lower okay so that's on all the strings that's going to be true now it's a little lower so that, that would be the main thing you could look at if you want a kind of a visual cue, but try not to travel too much. If you get onto these lower strings, depending on your cello, 
if you sink in heavy enough to make the string move, you might end up just kind of doing a double stop. So you, you might have to cheat a little bit closer to the middle to get that. Okay, so you're... So you're just kind of catching the string, you pop it in the motion, scoot it to the next position for the, you know, either down bow or up bow. As kind of a bonus, if this, once this becomes pretty comfortable, you can do something where you, you know, you move to different strings. So that time I start on the A string and I'm set up for the D string. Okay, so. That time I went back to the A. You can mix it up, like I'll do A to the G. Okay, so all these, you can just kind of move it back and forth. It's a really good way to practice, again, like string crossings, stuff like that. Give it a try. This is, this is like, for me, if I was talking about bow hold, not, it's, this is definitely not basics, but bow hold kind of you know, flexibility, all that kind of work. This is like the Mount Everest. You, you say you can do collet. If you're really doing collet correctly, I think you, that's like your certificate of merit, like boom, you have a completely flexible bow hand that has lots of control and precision because collet kind of involves so many of the topics we're, we've been talking about, okay? So if it's a long process, then join the club. It took a long time for me to get it. Uh, just chip away at it. Try to have fun with it. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't come right away. Just enjoy it. Okay. Thanks so much. And I will see you next week.